is Viva Podcast. Thank you for joining in our morning daily devotion. You can have great eyesight but a poor outlook. Great eyesight but poor vision. The most prominent miracle we see time and again repeated in the scriptures is the healing of the blind. Helen Keller, the first deaf blind person to earn a Bachelor of Arts degree said, The only thing worse than being blind is having sight but no vision. Bible tells us much the same. Where there is no vision, people perish. You may say, I can see. The question is, are you seeing clearly? Now, Jesus moved and operated at a time when there were no pharmacists, no ophthalmologists, no hospitals, very few doctors. The place was crawling with sick people. They had more sicknesses than they had names for diseases. No CT scans, no MRI, no x-rays, none of it. Too many suffering and no place to put them in. So they were excommunicated from towns and held hostage till they died. Christian science rejects medical attention in favor of prayer. God help us if we ever lose faith in medicine and healthcare today and have to live by faith. Isn't faith in doctors also God-given faith? Aren't doctors also sent to us by God? The lepers congregated with lepers and so did the blind and crippled because you felt better hanging around people you can relate to. And into this environment walks in Jesus. God's pharmacist wrapped in flesh. The balm of Gilead. If Jesus came only to heal people, he would have spent his entire life healing people. He wasn't so much after disease, but the cross was about healing the soul, not really the body. If he would stop to heal the sicknesses of the body, he would have never ended up on the cross to heal the soul. Of course, he did raise people from the dead, not because they were anyone special. The widow of Nain's son, how many books of the Bible did he write? What did Lazarus do after he rose up from the dead? He died again. Jesus used them as an opportunity to make a bigger point, a canvas on which he painted. They were a living sign to a dying world that the God we serve is able. Why did he over and over again heal blind people? Is he showing us the danger of being blind on the inside? I see people who destroy families and cry. The blindness of the soul. Our inlook determines our outlook. And so he takes a Paul, meets him on the road to Damascus, takes away his sight on the outside, but flashes signs on the inside. And Paul is bright on the inside, but dark on the outside. So dark that he had to be led by the men he was leading on the outside. But all of them sat at Paul's feet to hear about the light he saw on the inside. Jesus spits in the eye. Nothing to smile about. You are actually degraded. The dynamics of this type of healing are so unique. You don't see him heal any other blind person this way. Each was healed differently. Jesus doesn't want us to develop a recipe for healing blindness or any other sickness because each of us has an awakening in a different way. Some of us who are in the process of being healed try to straighten out everybody else and apply our prescription on them. It may be easier to fix other people than to fix ourselves. Healing is progressive. One touch doesn't always do it. Jesus is coming to Bethsaida. It's a port where fishermen gather, so it's a rough place. And here they bring him a blind man. We don't know who the they is, but God will always give you a they. It might not be your spouse, a mother or father. That protective love. Some people do not know that kind of love. That's why we become difficult people, as we have had no role models in our life. Some of us have never had the benefit of experience and growing in such support mechanisms, and yet we survive. We didn't get water, no sunlight, yet the plant grew. What if the blind man didn't listen to the day? They brought him to Jesus. The first thing Jesus does is turn and take him out of the village. He just got here, Jesus, and you take him out. I am so distracted by the blindness that I forgot to look at the environment. God, are you not God in Bethsaida? Until the blind man sees his environment correctly, his outlook will never change. Could it be possible that Bethsaida is contributing to his disparity? Woe unto thee, Bethsaida. It's a cursed city because they refuse to believe in the power of God. The man says, I see men walking as trees. Is it the problem with the eyes or with the men you see? You could have a touch from God and still not have the right outlook. You could be saved and still have no recovery. The first stage of recovery represents most of us. Better, but not whole. And so our difference is determined by our outlook. Do you think Jesus needed to ask that man a question? He already knew the answer. He asked this man, how do you know what you see? So that the man confesses that one touch is not enough. I need something else. I see men walking as trees. I've had an experience with God, but I still don't have the right outlook. 
I'm still negative. I'm saved, but I'm still controlling. I'm saved, but I still want to be on top. I'm saved, but I'm still aggressive. I'm saved, but I'm still stubborn. I need another time because of how I see people, because of how I snap at people. My outlook is negative. You're either whole or not whole. And Jesus looks at the man and says, come here. Let me finish what I started. I didn't bring you out of that mess to leave that mess in you. This time, I will lay my hand. He said, Lord, I want to be your disciple. In order to be anybody's disciple, it means I want to see like you see. I want to get your insight. Because if I'm seeing one thing and you are seeing another, I cannot be your disciple. So I'm measuring my vision against yours. Elijah told Elisha, if you see what I see, you will have a double portion of my spirit. That means you can have what I have. Pray with me. Compassionate Father, many of us have eyes and yet we are groping in the dark. I need to see. See that I have trouble with my attitude and so measure my vision against yours in order that I can get your insight into my leprous heart. And when you have looked inside, tell me that you can fix this broken me and make me whole again. For more details, please contact 9163 or email us to info at fibaonline.org. Thank you.